Today I am in Sandemar. It's like a national park, I think. And um, I'm gonna be using the OM1 and the OM 90mm macro lens to do some random photography. I'm actually not sure what I'm gonna shoot. I'm just gonna shoot whatever I find that I think can make for a nice photo. And just have a long and relaxing walk. trying to make stacks of this small drop with the sun behind it. I see that already when it's a single frame, it's a beautiful photo, just this little drop on a piece of grass. But I would want to do a stack so you can see the full depth. I think that could be really, really stunning. Uh, it's very hard though because it's windy and the drop is just bouncing around a lot. So I'm gonna try to do like this, support the lens on my hand and wait for it to calm down a bit and then we'll try another stack. I did a few tries, hopefully I got a good stack by now. <laughs> uh, but it's hard, it's hard when uh, the drop is so small and bouncing around a lot and I'm shooting at two times magnification, which with this sensor is equivalent to four times on full frame, so yeah, it's a bit of a challenge. But I think that is a great tip if you want to continue doing macro photography now that it's a bit colder at least in Europe, and there aren't that many insects out anymore, then water drops that you can find on the ground in the mornings can be really beautiful, especially when you put the sun uh, in the background so that the sunlight shines through the water drop towards you. Uh, it pretty much always makes for a nice photo. Not sure how this happened, but apparently I am inside a fenced area. <laughs> despite me not going through any gate or over any fence or anything. Whew. So I've been here before once in Sandemar National Park. It was like a year ago in the summer did some macro photography, some insect photography for my Patreon page. But I've never been here in the autumn. But it's a pretty beautiful area, some nature, the sea, maybe some birds. We'll see what we can encounter today. Apparently there are also cows in here. Time for a little coffee break. So as you might know, I did a quick review of this lens, the Olympus 90mm, uh, when it came out. Or just after launch 
And uh, then I didn't buy it. Instead, I began by buying the much cheaper 60mm and I've been using that a lot this summer together with the Raynox to get to around 1.6 times magnification. So that has been a great option. But uh, I wanted to own the 90mm as well, or at least try it for a few weeks. Uh, so I purchased it. And the reason is that it's nice to have the whole range of magnification from infinity to two times without having to take on and off uh, a Raynox filter. Uh, especially since sometimes I want to film something uh, at some distance. And I don't know, it's just a lot more convenient to have it all in one lens. Also, I like this feature that you can have some kind of manual focusing for macro uh, with this ring. Uh, more of a feeling of control. Uh, only problem though is that when you activate this ring to set the focus like this, it doesn't work with the auto bracketing. It kind of goes into complete manual mode. So that is a bit frustrating because I use the auto bracketing a lot. I'm gonna go down to the sea here to see if we can find anything interesting. There is like a bird watching tower over there. Not sure if you can see, but there are a bunch of flies sitting here on the tower. They really like sitting like this in the sun. So there are actually a bunch of really big hoverflies here clinging to the last few flowers that you can find uh, for this season. Uh, I don't really recognize this species of hoverfly. Uh, they are big and beautiful. Took a few shots now in natural light, in direct sunlight and I think that could be a great illustration uh, of why I don't like shooting macro in direct sunlight because I think it pretty much never looks good at least not in the middle of the day like right now uh, maybe indoors Michael can just briefly explain what the problem is with shooting uh, in natural light without a flash oh hi <laughs> indoors Michael here I am here with a quick note about why it is usually a bad idea to not use a flash and to rely on sunlight to shoot insects. As you have seen already in some of the pictures that Outdoors Michael has taken, you get this weird glare in the insect eyes and it never looks good when you shoot insects in direct sunlight. You see this glare in all kinds of insect eyes. And it's not only the glare, it's also that the light is very harsh because it's undiffused coming from just one direction. And it makes the colors look bad, it makes the contrast too high and the whole picture looks kind of washed out. So you should never allow the sun to shine directly on your insect. It could maybe perhaps work in the golden hour but not in the middle of the day. So no matter if you're using a flash or not, try to block the sun with your body or with your camera or diffuser. And uh, if you block the sun, you will get a softer light. But if you're not using a flash, often you will not have enough light to get decent depth of field and a good shutter speed. 
You want to be shooting at f8 or smaller apertures like f11 or f16. And this requires quite a lot of light if you're not gonna shoot at like ISO 2000 or 5000. And also you need a shutter speed of at least 1 200th or 1 250th of a second to get a sharp photo of an insect. And this combination of factors makes it pretty much impossible to take good insect photos without a flash, unfortunately. And as this video goes on and as Outdoors Michael goes on to photograph more and more insects, you'll see more examples of how it looks pretty bad as compared to insect photography with a flash. And that's really all I wanted to say, I think. Over to you again, Outdoors Michael. Thank you for that, Indoors Michael. Let's uh, look around some more to see what else we can find here. So here we have a nice little flower and uh, I'm gonna try focus stacking it at f3.5 which is the widest aperture that you have on this lens. And the reason I want to do that is that I want to keep the background as blurry as possible while still getting a bit of depth of field in the flower. And uh, yeah, this is how it looks. I spotted a small, small spider here on a leaf. Let's see if I can capture it, possibly. It's funny that as I was looking for the other small spider, I found a slightly larger spider that was sleeping in a leaf. Uh, snapped a shot. So it is pretty cold today. It's only around 8 degrees Celsius. And uh, we had our first frosty night, meaning the temperature was below freezing. Uh, but still there are quite a lot of insects outside and spiders. Um, here for example <laughs> and uh, yeah I think it's gonna continue until we have a couple more frosty nights and uh, yeah I'm gonna try to take advantage if possible I think that was a pretty good shot, despite being in direct sunlight. And that's one of the greatest things with this lens, that it is so long focal length. It's equivalent to 180mm on full frame, so it's really one of the best lenses you can buy if you want to photograph damselflies, because they are so skittish. This one wasn't super skittish, but uh, it would have been harder with a shorter focal length, I think. Not sure what's going on there, some mating action with one individual waiting for his turn perhaps, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. It's 
beautiful out here. Never went to this part of the beach before. It's very nice. Now I regret not going here in the summer. As you might have noticed, I haven't done that many photo walks recently. It's been like two months or something, I think. And it's been summer, so it's not that usual for me to miss so many opportunities to do insect photography outdoors in the summer. And the reason for this is um, partly because I got a little bit burned out. I didn't really feel like photographing insects as much this summer. Uh, so whenever that happens, it happens from time to time, uh, I try to respect that feeling and I never kind of push myself to go out still because then I'm afraid that I might lose the passion altogether. And sure, this is my job, I need to do these videos, but I also always try to balance that with listening to my inner uh, feelings. I always try to listen to what I feel like doing and do mostly that. Uh, so I've been taking a step back from insect photography and now I feel the passion coming back again, the urge to go out and do photo walks. So I'm gonna do more of them now. Um, but that is something I learned in my past career as a programmer and entrepreneur that you should never push yourself too hard uh, when you're not feeling like it because uh, that will in the end unfortunately lead to you becoming burned out and losing your passion for whatever you're doing. I think it's better long term to just take a step back and uh, do something else for a while, do something that feels interesting and then your initial passion will come back sooner or later. And now it's back for me so now I'm gonna do <laughs> more photo walks. Unfortunately, insect season is kind of over. It's ending just about now, uh, but that's fine. There will be other things to photograph <laughs> during the winter and uh, soon enough spring will be here again. And that's it folks for this little video. Hope you enjoyed it and please do subscribe for more macro photography videos. See you soon again.